disclosing even that simple fact until newspapers overturned a gagging order. For the first time in centuries, in a direct challenge to the Magna Carta of 1215, the entire trial will be held in secrecy. Do you understand? This is where we're going. We are overturning hundreds of years of tradition that protects individual liberties, star chambers, secret proceedings, people not being allowed to have a jury. This is where we're headed with this police state. They're surveilling people. They're going, they've already passed the NDAA where they can indefinitely detain people even without a trial. So they can either have a secret trial or they can have no trial at all. And he points out, this is a quote from uh, somebody named Shami Chakrabarti. I don't know who that is. It's somebody from the UK. But he says, transparency isn't an optional luxury in the justice system. It's the key to ensuring fairness and protecting the rule of law. And then they can have a couple of examples. They say, this same government that's now in power in the UK passed a Justice and Security Act just last year that instead of judges... They allow ministers to be given power over evidence in court, risking the principle of a fair trial. And then it goes all the way back to Margaret Thatcher in 1986. She had a public order act. What happened with that was they criminalized words or behavior that would cause harassment, alarm, or distress. And he points out, who would have thought when that was passed that it would eventually be used against a wide range of groups, all the way from gay rights activists to Christian street preachers? Just a public order act saying that you can't use harassing speech or speech that's going to cause alarm or distress. Then they give one more example here that says, Neither did proponents of the Terrorism Act suggest that the source of people on the receiving end would include an octogenarian refugee called Walter Wolfgang, who had fled the Nazis and had the temerity to hackle a minister. So he gets hit with the Anti-Terrorism Act. That's what we're seeing in America with the Patriot Act. That's what we're seeing with the FISA court, which is secretly holding these trials. And we were told that Obama was going to be the most transparent president we'd ever had. He campaigned on transparency. He has been a transparent fraud. He's been a transparent dictator. Many people on the left have the honesty to stand up and say that, to point that out. But many people, just as we see with Republicans, have more allegiance to their political party than they do to principle. And so that's why we see all these people lining up in lockstep behind him. So far, that hasn't really happened with the Bergdahl case. We'll see if that's something that's going to, if they're going to change. So far, we've only seen Harry Reid go in and support him 100% on this. Everybody else has tried to distance him, e themselves from him. Even Dianne Feinstein has said that he broke the law. Well, if he broke the law, when are we going to do something about it? I don't know. Let's go to uh, the right to bear arms and FEMA camp, uh, FEMA region number 10. David, exactly. That's what I was uh, going to speak to with you about. Uh, we need to link up and watch what they do with Edward Snowden. I saw a link to the Drudge Report that said possibly he might make a trip back to the U.S. Also, with Bo Bergdahl, um, they're saying that he left. One of the first orders, even in basic training that you take, I'm proud of military myself, is the order is I will not quit my post until properly relieved. If you do that, you are a term that we have not seen thrown out there yet in the media, which is AWOL. AWOL is absent without leave. That is a punishable offense under the Uniform Code of Military Justice. This is something that has not been brought up as well. Um, I think we need to watch both of what they do with both of these people. Uh, slowly, both of them have leaked some kind of information to the enemy or given information to the enemy. And we need to see if there's any consistency on the uh, how we deal with both of these uh, heroes or traitors. Uh, well, you, you know, when you say that, that Snowden has leaked information to the enemy, you know, quite frankly, I don't think it came as news to any European spy agency that the American spy agency was doing what they're doing. I don't think it came as any news to any terrorists that the NSA was watching them. I think the only people that were surprised were the American public who had no reason to suspect that their government was spying on them. We reported it. Nobody believed us when we said it. Nobody paid any attention to the NSA whistleblowers like Benny and Drake and others. 
It was ignored by the mainstream media. They pretended that it didn't exist, just as they did Bilderberg, the same technique we saw the Chinese government use against Tiananmen Square. Ignore it, pretend it's not there, flush it down the memory hole. Fortunately, I think the most important thing about Snowden is that this is now out and in the public, and we understand who the real criminals are. Gentlemen, in search of a million dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean really get their attention, then get the mud, my magic mud. The fluoride-free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste. And safe to swallow. My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens. Comes as a powder for pure whitening power. Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. MyMagicMud.com Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. Hi folks, Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed, and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach. And that's why I stock my pantry with high-quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today for special offers on emergency food storage or call their preparedness specialist at 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Do business with someone who shares your values. MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex. Great news, pure water lovers. BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com has a special discount offer for all GCN listeners. You can't do better than a Big Berkey for economy. For only 1.7 cents a gallon, a single set of filters can last for 5 to 10 years. There's none better than a Big Berkey for emergency preparedness as a backup water source. And you just can't beat a Big Berkey to remove dangerous chlorine, all types of fluoride, pathogenic bacteria, cysts, parasites, and unhealthy viruses products from municipal water. Berkey water filter systems are even powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water. For the gold standard in water filters, get a Big Berkey at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. And all GCN listeners get 5% off all ceramic filter systems. For details, call 1-877-99-BERKEY. That's 877-99-BERKEY. Big Berkey water filters for the love of clean water. Get the most important package of information you'll ever receive in your life for only $10. The package includes three books and seven DVD programs which cover biblical miracles and prophecy. The Shroud of Turin, The Third Secret of Fatima, What Really Happened to the Catholic Church, and more. Call 800-513-0029. That's 800-513-0029. Or go to VaticanCatholic.com. That's VaticanCatholic.com. 800-513-0029. VaticanCatholic.com. That's the sound of your door being kicked in by an intruder with a single kick. Criminals know that your wooden door frames are weak and your alarm system can't keep them out. That's the sound of the same door now protected by the door sentinel. Standard locks, deadbolts, and alarm systems can't prevent forced entry. Harden your door and door jam with a door sentinel. Protect your home now at MySafeDoor.com. Go to MySafeDoor.com for a special limited time offer. The door sentinel, your home's first line of defense. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. We've been taking calls and comments about the one-year anniversary of the Ed Snowden documents beginning to leak. What do you think is going to happen? What's your take on it? Is he a criminal? Did he betray state secrets? Or did he inform us of who the real criminals are? 
did he get people to believe what Alex Jones and NSA whistleblowers have been pe telling people for more than 10 years in many cases? Uh, Alex has been talking about it longer than the NSA whistleblowers have. They blew the whistle back in the early 2000s. And about 10 years later, Snowden produced the documents. You know, we had a report in the uh, very first segment of this hour uh, going over Microsoft and what Mark Andreessen had said, basically cheering the NSA on. And, you know, we had information back in uh, December that was leaked, another one of the Snowden documents, essentially showing Apple's involvement in this. And there were a series of slides that I found to be very disturbing in both their cynicism and their mockery of the American public. It was a series of three slides, and if you all remember, the Mac was introduced in 1984 with that award-winning commercial. It was shot by Ridley Scott. It aired on the Super Bowl just once. Uh, it's been seen many, many times about the runner who runs up with the, the hammer and throws it into the Big Brother screen and explodes it. Uh, and they, they showed that, a, a, a single shot of that commercial, and they said, who would have thought that in 1984, then you get the next slide. And it says that this, and they show the iPhone, would become Big Brother. And then they show people lined up outside the Apple stores in order to get an iPhone, which is nothing but a surveillance device for the NSA. Now, that's the way the police state rolls out. That's the way the technological, uh, technocratic takeover of our society rolls out. It rolls out with one hand to help you. And another one in your back pocket, another one spying on your most personal aspects. That's what we're seeing happening. Now, they, they pointed out that, of course, there was a piece of software, Dropout Jeep. Uh, it was, it's very well known. The NSA uses that. And the Wall Street Journal said, Apple says it never worked with NSA to create a backdoor on the products. And yet, either Apple is very technically incompetent or they were working with him. And that's the same thing you can say about all of these different companies. Because, of course, it's kind of a, probably like a mobster type of thing. That's the way these guys work. They come in and say, well, you can either be a part of us and we'll promote you, we'll give you government contracts, we'll give you access, or we'll basically find some way to shut you down with some kind of a white glove inspection. That's the way they can shake these corporations down. They do it with small businesses, they do it with individuals, and of course they can do it with the biggest of the companies. I think it was interesting that Apple did not join the PRISM program until after Steve Jobs was gone. So I don't think that he was uh, all that amenable to it, but I think that the, the people who've been left behind, who are essentially managers, not visionaries like Steve Jobs, don't really see that it's their lives that are on the line and not just ours. Because, you know... If they turn this over into a police state, they're the ones who are going to be under the microscope as well. It's always the people who are the leaders of a country, just as we saw in the uh, coup in Thailand. We always see that it's the legislators, the people who are in power, that are the greatest threat to these people. They're the ones who are lined up and taken away first. So that's uh, something for them to keep in mind. In just a couple of minutes that we got left, let's go quickly to Jason in Colorado. Jason, you had a comment about the Ed Snowden documents. Yes, sir. Go ahead. I'm just here to uh, say that I actually think what he did was a good thing, as long as he's done it under the right uh, reasoning. And I'm pretty sure that the government's going to make it twist into something that it's not. And on another thing that you were talking about as far as the uh, Internet is concerned, how is the best way to uh, find out what sites and stuff you can actually still go to that isn't under government control or spying on us? I know yours isn't, and I love your site. I've only been here for like a month watching you guys, and I've done everything I can to help out with the system because I actually use what you guys are doing. Well, thank you. You know, they're, they're spying on everybody on the Internet, and uh, that's something people need to be aware of. That's what this Reset the Net campaign is about. If you're a developer, what can you do to give people tools that are going to, if not totally block this, because when we had William Binney on, of course, he was the global technical director. He said... There isn't anything you can do to stop it. But if everybody is doing that, that's the point in the Reset the Net campaign. If everybody is resisting them, 
that's a very effective strategy. Just as we see if, if one person stands up and opposes the government uh, in a protest, they're going to slam you down. We've seen that even in open carry rallies. When you got a thousand people with guns slung over their shoulder, they leave everybody alone. Everybody leaves and you've got just one person left, they get hassled. We stand together collectively for our individual rights. In other words, to stand together or we're going to hang separately, as Benjamin Franklin points. It's always been that way. We'll be right back. We're on the march. The